The Cancer Society of New Zealand and oncologists throughout the country have been asking for people like Barry to be given immunotherapy treatment since last year. Dr Christopher Jackson is an oncologist and medical director of the Cancer Society. I asked him when he believes the efficacy, effectiveness of Keytruda was sufficiently established. Two pivotal studies were published in June of 2015 in the New England Journal of Medicine, presented at the world's largest uh, cancer meeting, ESCO, and simultaneously in the world's largest, largest medical journal. So the evidence came out a year ago, more than a year ago, which demonstrated that both of these drugs improve overall survival in comparison to their comparator arms. So quite clearly in black and white, they improve overall survival, they help people live longer compared to any other treatment that we have had to this point. Dr Christopher Jackson, oncologist and medical director of the Cancer Society. So how many people might this have affected? 350 people a year die from advanced melanoma, John. Um, and some ex estimates are that every year 350 people would be eligible for these drugs. And given that the first application went into Pharmac, I think it was about um, around September last year, the evidence came out in, in June of last year. That's a year between the evidence coming out and... Um, and the drugs being available. So in that year, 350 people by Pharmax estimates uh, could have had that drug and could have benefited. I've looked after a number of patients over the last year who've heard about this data, who've read about it themselves, who've talked about it, who have not been able to afford it, who have not been able to get it, who have suffered, who have died as a result of not having treatment. And that's heartbreaking. The great news is that from Friday, we now have an option to offer our patients. I congratulate Pharmac on getting the deal together, and it's great news for the patients. But I'm worried that if we don't change some of the fundamentals, we're just going to have this debate again next time there's a new drug. And what we need is a clear distinction between the clinical effectiveness and the cost effectiveness. And oncologists around the country want to be part of that process, and we want to be involved. Do we need a review of the process? If we are confusing clinical efficacy with cost, if they are muddying the waters of each other, and, and if we are disputing efficacy when in fact th there doesn't seem to be any dispute, and that in part seems to be a cost issue, do we need to review the system? Pharmac can't write a blank cheque to drug companies, nor should they. It is their absolute responsibility to ensure that they get the best possible deal for New Zealanders. But we also have to be straight up. And we have to say, if the drug's too expensive, then it's too expensive, and then we need to put the blowtorch on the drug companies to get the prices down. But I will not sit with my patients and tell them the drugs don't work, because they do. Dr Christopher Jackson, Medical Director of the Cancer Society, to check the e efficacy of these new immunotherapies away from the emotional pressure of oncologists who have to deal with patients in New Zealand, we went offshore. We spoke to Dr Anthony Rebus, an American oncologist and the principal investigator for the large phase one trial of Keytruda. He told us the efficacy of Keytruda has been established for a year. That was the research that led, it being to, uh, led to it being funded in Great Britain and Australia. So we went to Australia. We contacted Georgina Logg, medical oncologist at the Melanoma Institute Australia. She told us she had absolutely no doubt that therapies like Keytruda improved outcomes for patients with melanoma. She also said the drugs called anti-PD-1 therapies have revolutionised cancer treatment. So as welcome as it is and as grateful as people are, why is Keytruda only becoming available in New Zealand? And now, I asked Pharmac's Director of Operations, Sarah Fitt, whether it was cost or efficacy. So it was partly about the budget, but it was actually about the evidence and making sure that this was the right decision um, for, for quite a huge investment of money, quite a considerable sum. Um, what, which, evidence, uh, what evidence has changed? In terms well, of Keytruda, what evidence has changed from June of last year? So the, the evidence, the, I guess the feedback we've had, the trials have come out from Nivolumab, um, which is the other agent. Um, the no, Sarah, sorry, sorry. In terms of Keytruda, what evidence has changed since June of last year? Well, the, what I'm coming back to is that with the Nivolumab, the advice we've got in the last couple of months is that we, the, the clinicians in New Zealand consider these medicines are interchangeable. So they are happy to switch from one to the other. We didn't have that information until fairly recently. So that, that we are now treating these as one class of medicine. Right. I'm so, sorry, Sarah. Can you... I'm just confused why it took so long to get Keytruda to market. And in part, that was about funding. And you've said that the money became available in May. You've moved quickly now. since then. Yeah. Yeah. But what, 
data around efficacy has changed since June of last year, 12 months ago, 13 months well, ago? The, the, data has been, the, the data we don't feel at that stage was, was convincing enough. But so, the data so what the data map, is more convincing since then? What studies have you received since data. then? But, the we're talk, but we're talking about Keytruda here, aren't we? Yeah, but what we're talking about here is a class effect. Um, so that data, we now feel confident enough with the data with the volume map is that we can treat these agents as the same. We didn't have that information a year ago. It strikes me that you're stuck between a rock and a hard place here. You have an enormously difficult job. Uh, medicine has never moved as fast, I guess, since the arrival of penicillin, really, in terms of suddenly we have a new class of drugs called immunotherapy. Chemotherapy wasn't working. These drugs are, people are reading about them on the internet and saying, I want them. You have finite budgets and you have to get value for money. I just wonder, was Pharmac singular enough in your pursuit of data around these drugs? Did you go back to the minister and say, hey, there is a case here for increased funding immediately? Should these drugs, particularly Keytruda, about which the data has been known for a year now, have been made available before now? Well, well there's many medicines that we would like funded. So, I mean, I guess, as, as I mentioned, um, the hepatitis C agents are another extremely good example. The, these are medicines that provide a complete cure um, for 95% patients with 12 weeks treatment. So there's a whole range of new medicines becoming available all the time. And those are the discussions we've had, and that's why we did put forward a case for more money to be allocated to us in the budget. But in the meantime, we are reviewing the data. We're talking to the clinicians across many medicines and many different um, treatment areas. So we're looking at the whole package. We're not just looking at one particular group of patients. We have to ensure we're doing the right thing for all the patients in New Zealand. With, with taxpayer dollars. And, that, and, yeah, that, and, that, and, and, and the, no one disputes that. Chris Jackson from the Cancer Society is saying you have to do that. Yeah. It's just we that, take that responsibility extremely seriously. And, and we, that, we want to make the right decisions for that. That's right, because this is taxpayer money. And, and, and also with patients. We want to do the right thing for patients too. Ha, have, you, have you done that here? I mean, I, I just wonder what Chris Jackson is saying and what the oncologists I've spoken to are saying is that it seems as if clinical efficacy, in other words, the way these drugs are working in unprecedented fashion, has been muddied with cost effectiveness. And Pharmac has not wanted to go to people and say, hey, we're not sure if we're going to do this because these drugs are too expensive. So you've hedged around efficacy to avoid telling that unpalatable truth. Well, I mean, all the decisions we make are around cl clinical evidence and price. I mean, we, we, have, we can't ignore the price of these medicines. They're extremely expensive medicines, and we have to be sure we're making the right decisions. So we have been actively seeking out clinical evidence and talking to our clinicians on a very regular basis. It hasn't been sat on a shelf waiting for people to come to us. We've been actively working on, as I said, both these medicines, but a whole range of medicines um, for the last year. That's what we do. We're trying to invest in as many new medicines as we can to get those health outcome, outcomes for all patients. So that's what we, we, we don't sit around and wait for that information to come to us. And we, as I said, we've been in really, really intense negotiations with the, two, the suppliers of these two medicines for the last year.